Okay, we're going to create a terrain in UDK. We want to click Tools, New Terrain. Location, you can change later with the Transform to Tools. You can move this terrain around just like you could a mesh on the screen. So I'm just going to leave those at zero. Patches, the lower the number, the smaller it, smaller it is, the larger, the larger it is. So I'm going to leave this at 16 by 16. Next, we're going to leave this as default. Just click Finish. Here's our terrain. We want to click the terrain button. And toggle wireframe on off. When I click this, watch how this changes. We have a wireframe now for reference so we can see the details of our hills and valleys we'll be creating. I'm also going to increase tessellation, which increases the number of polygons and therefore gives us more detail. Now I'm going to click the paint button if it's not already selected. Mouse over our terrain and you see our little round paintbrush. If you hold in control and press the left mouse button, it'll raise this terrain as you paint across it. If you right click, it will lower it. Now you can change the value of how fast this happens with by changing strength. If I put it all the way up to 100, it's going to really happen fast. So you want to adjust that to your liking. You can also increase the radius or decrease the strength. But in decre increasing the radius, you can see my paintbrush is much larger now. So you can decrease your radius, decrease and increase your radius and your strength as you need to. And some other tools you can use are noise, which will generate noise across your landscape. Just so you have, don't have any, you never want any completely flat land. It just doesn't look realistic. So noise is a great way to just mix things up. Then you can click Smooth and smooth those over without losing the noise. It just kind of basically normalizes the peaks and valleys to a nice smooth shape that looks realistic. This is also good for ramps. If I paint a really tall hill here and I want to be able to walk up this hill, I can click Smooth control left click and you can see that it's smoothing out the distance between the, the ground and the top of the hill and makes a nice gradual ramp that you can walk up. Another tool is flatten. With flatten it picks the center point of your paintbrush and when you control and left click everything you paint across will be that height. So this is good for making paths between hills, for making plateaus, and in general just making flat land for your character to walk across. I'm going to use the smooth function to smooth out some of these unrealistically straight lines. And now we want to, before we test out our terrain, I want to right click, add actor, add light, dominant directional light. This adds a moon or a sun type light that's cast across your entire landscape. And here it is. Let me select that. And you will probably want to rotate this a bit to cast some interesting shadows. You can see how it kind of changes the way the sun, this directional light, is hitting your landscape. So I'm just going to cast a few interesting shadows by rotating it this way. Pull back out. And now we're going to build and we'll test out this terrain. Right click your terrain, play from here 
and now we're walking across our terrain that we've created. And you can see maybe some areas over here that still need to be smoothed out. They little, look a little bumpy. Here I can't climb up this hill because it's not smoothed here, but here I smoothed it so I can just walk right up. And all the collision is handled for you. You don't have to do anything to make this collision work. It's nice, uh, nice and smooth movement over all these hills and valleys. And of course, you could shoot too. Your bullets will not go through this terrain. Okay. Let's go back to terrain. Toggle off our wireframe. We don't need it anymore. And let me go ahead and smooth some of this over just a little bit. Like I said, getting these re little realistic touches makes a big difference. I'm going to smooth out this landscape a little. Okay, now we want to open our content browser, which I have off screen. And let's type in dirt and click materials and I'm gonna pick this you need to pick a material that you're going to use on your terrain so I'm gonna choose this lighter dirt looking material and it's selected it has the yellow box around it that's very important for the next step I'm gonna right click here new terrain setup layer from material auto create that's going to automatically create the base material that we're going to paint our other material on. And it automatically occurred because we had it selected previously in the content browser, so you have to have that selected before that step will work. Now, in my content browser, let's go back to dirt materials. Okay, now I'm going to select this darker dirt material and see it's selected. It has the yellow box around it. Right click here. New terrain setup layer from material auto create. The exact same option. This time the landscape doesn't change, but we have the option now if we select paint and then select this specific uh, layer that we just created, we can now control and left click and actually paint that material across the other material using the base material like a canvas we're painting on it and you want to adjust your strength here so you have a nice gradual change from one texture to the next and of course you can hold control and right click and you're erasing it in essence So there's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just adding a little texture here and there. Okay. So let's right click and play from here and we'll take a closer look at those textures I painted. And you can see if they gradually blend together it's, it will look much more realistic and it always looks good from a distance to have a variety of texture. All right, now let's, in our content browser, let's select a material. I'm going to look for a rock. Oops, I don't want a material. I actually want a static mesh. And this looks like a nice gray rock that would fit in this environment. It's selected. It has the yellow box around it right click here new deco layer now what we're doing here I'm gonna call this rocks we are adding decorations to our terrain at this point this would be how you add bushes trees grass that kind of stuff we're gonna add rocks I'm I'm imagining this as some sort of planetary landscape we we don't wanna select rocks yet we wanna select the terrain that we last created click properties and you want to expand deco layers here 
and you can see that rocks is tied to this layer because of the order we created it. Um, so the decoration is actually tied to this layer. Now we're going to go to decorations, add a new item by pressing plus, the plus button, the green plus button. We're going to expand that and where it says factory none you want to press the blue arrow and select static mesh component factory. We're going to expand that and it says static mesh none well, we have the rock that we want to paint across this landscape selected in the content browser. So I can press the green arrow here and it automatically plugs that rock in. Now, I've got, uh, there's a couple more things I want to set up before I start painting. Min scale, I'm going to leave it at 1, but I'm going to change max scale to 12. And what this will do is randomly place these rocks somewhere between a minimum value of 1 and a maximum value of 12. And this, this will make more sense as you see me paint these rocks on. Density, I'm going to change that to 0.5. This just controls how frequent they appear as you're painting them. You want to be careful. Make sure you don't set this number too high or you'll lock up your system. And you'll see why in just a second. Let me move this terrain editor out of the way. I'll leave the properties on the screen. Actually, with the terrain editor, let me select rocks. And now, with paint selected, we want to left click or press control and with your left mouse key pressed in, move across your landscape. And we're actually painting those rocks, the, the decorations across the landscape. And again, your strength and radius affects how they populate your landscape as you are painting. And now you're going to see how these numbers make sense. Let's change our minimum scale value to 10. Well, now we don't have any rocks smaller than 10. So I'm going to change that back to 1 because I want a few small ones. If I change my max scale to to say two for example then I've got a bunch of really small rocks well I want more variety than that so I'm gonna set it back up to about 14 and maybe I'll set this up to about three so we don't we can see every rock that it that it creates actually press enter in there now it's an effect with the density see I could change this to one press enter and you can see that it affects how much of the area that I painted is filled with rocks. So you want to be careful, don't make this number too large. I'm going to back it down to about 0.7. Okay, that looks okay. Now I'm going to build, right click, play from here onto our, on our terrain, and you can see it's populated with all these rocks we placed, making a nice realistic landscape. Now these rocks have collision. There's collision built into those meshes. If you had bushes, like small bushes or grass that you didn't want your player tripping over all the time, you want to go back to this terrain properties and this is the same place we were adjusting our rock decoration values. Matter of fact, while I'm here, I think I'll change this max scale back down to 10 because I thought some of those rocks were a little large and maybe this will be 2. And in your decorations under factory, right under where we set up the static mesh, you want to uncheck collide actors. Now when I right click and play from here, I walk right through the rocks if you had small bushes or trees that you didn't want your player to constantly be tripping over that would be important to uh, to uncheck so you do not have collision on these decorations so you can have it with or without collisions and that's basic terrain